Hey! Hey, can you test that mic for me? And just say anything and do it. Daddy Frank? Daddy Frank! Help! Please! Hey, thanks, man. You really didn't do it. Welcome back to the Mad Tea Party, where you're never too sure you're not being recorded. What are your guys' thoughts on possession movies? You got your human possessions, you got your doll possessions. Pretty sure I once saw a movie about a hand being possessed or something. But I think after you see this movie, you'll all agree that those films are merely child's play. Let's, let's just start the thing. One solid minute of company production logos. Gotta be good when so many people had to be involved in it, eh? Credits are strewn across a bunch of choice Polaroids of a crime scene that's being cleaned up. But we don't have time to explain that. We've got a plot to get to. A kid on a bike is riding around at night in a suburban neighborhood when he passes by an RV. The door to the RV opens and for some reason he sees this as an opportunity to go inside. Why do horror movies do this? Every time something out of place happens, people gotta go investigate it. Bump in the night? Let's go check it out. Creepy laughing girl? I gotta go investigate that. The sounds of the dam feasting on the living as they scream for all eternity? Eh, well maybe I'll go check it out later. I got Netflix to watch. So of course he gets locked in and murdered by what appears to be the RV itself. That's, uh... That's stupid, right? Is it just me? Maybe it's just me. Cut to the next day, we see a family getting into an RV, the very same RV that turned the teenager into a smoothie the night before. You got Steve, his wife Jennifer, along with her kid Olivia, and Grandpa Charles. Olivia, honey, please don't jump on the bed. This camper is old. I don't want to break Grandpa's new toy. This isn't new. That kid's a jerk. Also along for the ride is Steve's brother Jay, and the only way you know that right away is because Charles says, Steve, where's your brother? Otherwise, you could swear this guy was just his older son or something. Jay has the attitude of an older kid who doesn't want to go on the lame family vacation in the RV, but he has to be there because dad's making him go. He's super angsty about being on this trip, even though he's a grown-ass man who could have just said, nah, I don't want to do that. If he has to go because Charles convinced him to join the family and be nice, that's fine. But don't act like a 19-year-old tool. Grow up. I'm looking for my son. He's 13, brown hair. He was wearing jeans and a black t-shirt. I'll keep an eye out. You don't want to get his name or her name or her phone number or something other than what she gave you? So off they go, and the beginning of this trip is just about as exciting as you think a family vacation in an RV is. Got some exposition to make sure you know grandma isn't around anymore. Complains about the AC not working, all the good stuff. So the vents are spitting out hot air and the windows won't open. Now that's interesting. I wonder if they'll be trapped inside and slowly cooked a lot. Oh, never mind. I thought it was a good idea, but I guess wasting our time is just as fun. Ew, gross, get it away. This kid then gets into the most awkward position at the window just to make this window jump scare happen. The brothers have a heart-to-heart -heart about Jay's attitude when he makes it even more confusing why he's here. Dad? For Dad? Really? What the fuck did he ever do for us? Side note, we don't know where these people are going, but I guess that doesn't matter because they just stopped on the side of the road to help two people whose car broke down. Enter siblings Samantha and Mark. Once in the RV, Sam finds a bunch of hair and scalp pieces in the sink. So the RV can blend up a person and make gore just appear whenever it wants to, and it's truly fucking with these people because the stuff disappears right after she sees it. This is another stupid horror movie trope where something is seen and heard or felt, and a second later after it disappears, the person doesn't acknowledge it anymore because they just assume it was in their head. You guys know how you're always having those horror hallucinations? They turn off the road and check the map. We know they're heading to some caves, but that's about it. But they say, oh, we're about 10 minutes away when you can clearly see they're in the middle of nowhere. They're not 10 minutes from anything, my dude. The two of them they picked up are also going... Uh... So after driving for about 30 minutes, they realize they messed up, and the RV starts to drive on its own. They get knocked around, and Mark breaks his neck. When they come to a stop, Jay pulls a knife out of the wall, and the RV bleeds. Hey, check it out, the dog is escaping the movie. Mommy? What? 
Honey, I am sorry. What's wrong? Well, he's gone. Kid, no one cares about your dog. I mean, T Tiny Frank? Tiny Frank? T Tiny Frank? Everybody stop what you're doing and look for God's sake! We never see the dog again. Maybe they just didn't want to film with it anymore. There's a lot of leeway as to what this RV ghost can do. He controls the RV, but does he also control these idiots who made all these mistakes to get into the middle of nowhere? Hmm. Touch. Jennifer is in the RV when the TV suddenly shows her one of the victims has been hanging out with him the whole time. I don't want to break Grandpa's voice. Well, it's due to Grandpa. Grandpa, Stop using this scream. When they show her again, she's just standing there waiting, so I imagine the scream looked something like this. Mommy? We're then treated to some cliches. The kid drew some demons that she saw somewhere and didn't say anything about it. Do kids do this? Like ever? Calmly draws demons that didn't scare them for some reason? Movies treat kids and dogs like they're these wise sages that can tap into another dimension. It's really dumb. Real kids do Fortnite dances. Ain't nothing wise about that. So the crew's stranded because the haunted RV won't start. The next step in this genius plan is to reach our full arms into the mechanics of the engine in order to fix it. Hey. Hey, look at this. What? What do you got there, Charles? What is this? Probably nothing worth shoving your full arm into, considering you know nothing about RVs. Well, that's a shame. Wonder if he saw some hard candy in there. He really wanted it. Later that night, Jennifer reaches blindly into the fridge and takes a swig of rancid old water. Blindly. She discovers everything in there is rotten and moldy, but doesn't question it or bring it up to anybody else. Fuck no, what are you, a functional human being? You get right out of here with that logic. Speaking of logic, Sam goes wandering out into the darkness to take a pee when she hears spooky whispering all around her. Upon further helloing into the dark, she spots one of the victim girls. So wait, the victims are allowed to leave the RV? These rules are ever-changing. She doesn't tell anybody what she saw, by the way. The next day, there's a lot of dicking around that leads to a buildup of what the filmmakers probably thought was the most shocking and devastating death in the film. I feel nothing. Honestly, I give kudos to that. A lot of horror movies are afraid of killing kids, which makes putting them in danger really predictable and boring. The movie doesn't give a shit, so I give it respect for that. First of all, he obviously didn't do it. The RV moved on its own like it has been since this whole thing began. Second of all, even if he had been in control of it, he didn't do it on purpose. What do you think, he has some weird vendetta out for a five-year-old girl? Third of all, nobody told him that this girl was behind the RV when he was starting it up. Nobody tried to get her out of the way either. So due to bad parenting, this is particularly their fault. It took us out in the middle of nowhere. It's slowly killing us. Hey, we got a believer here, folks. She's figured it out. So the group discusses sending Jay to go get help while the mentally unstable Jennifer stays in the vehicle that's still resting on her daughter's corpse and starts to freak out a little bit. At this point, we finally get a good look at the killer that's behind all of this. Look at me! <laughs> that's right, a stereotypical pedo glasses and stash man. How did these two not hear her banging on the glass? This is hilarious looking. When the guys get back inside, this is Jay's response to it. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? What? Jen? Jen! Come on, man. You're gonna hold a brother back from checking on his maybe dead wife? Maybe you are out to murder the family. They're also super accepting of her death. They never even check to see what happened to her. Anyway, after some family drama fluff, we get back to the going to get help plan when Sam finds a Polaroid on the floor of a dead girl. After looking under some drawers, they find the killer's big crazy knife weapon, pictures, gun, and hair he probably was saving for a rainy day or something. So the gang figures out what's going on, and if you're still lost, here's the tea. 
The RV was owned by your classic Jeffrey Dahmer serial killer who had a thing for torturing and murdering women in said RV. They discover a slip in the glove compartment that states Robert Gunthry last owned the RV. And everyone knows that name as a famous serial killer. Now Steve saw this slip at the beginning of the trip, but he didn't say anything. Like, oh hey, isn't that weird? Some guy named Jeffrey Dahmer used to own this RV. What are the odds of that? Not only that, but the serial killer was famous for killing people in an RV. Real weird, my dude. Anyway, once they figure it out, the RV jerks forward and Jay stabs himself with the crazy knife thing that he was holding upright. Are you serious? Most of the deaths so far have been from a sharp jostling. Should have called the movie The Jostling. Check out how Charles leaves. I'm sure the door was supposed to close on his own, but it really looks like he held it shut. He then stands in front of the RV and refuses to be anywhere else, even when the RV starts moving towards him. Charles, get out of the way. It's a real big vehicle, it can't do sharp turns. Stop running straight in front of it. The RV stops just short of killing him, for some reason, and he sets off to get help. Next up, Steve starts to lose control of his actions. So now the ghost can control the people in the RV too. Yeah, okay, just keep throwing rules at the wall. This movie is like the kid who makes up his own game on the playground and he keeps inventing more rules so that he can win. Oh no, you can't attack me because I'm immune to fire and lightning and rocks, and I can also control you guys, and I'm really big and strong and handsome and everybody loves me. I hate that kid. Richard. What were we talking about? Oh yeah. Steve grabs a gun and shoots Charles in the head. Then he can't live with that slice of truth, so he kills himself too, leaving Sam alone in the murder box, like a real gentleman. After some sweet time wasting, Sam is attacked by Ghost Killer Man who just starts wailing on her. It looks like all is lost until Sam grabs a knife and accidentally slashes the wall, hurting him. Remember when the RV bled? We're bringing it back. This is how that looked, by the way. So Killer Man has a weakness, a pretty big one. Real quick, here's a gripe of mine about this killer. He never speaks. Ever. Even when he's alive. The only thing he ever does is... Ugh, stop. So he... Her back into the bedroom and shuts the door before we cut to daytime. Two gentlemen show up out of nowhere on dirt bikes, get enticed to step inside the seemingly abandoned RV, and boom! Door shuts, followed by credits. This movie's plot is so lazy. So much information could have eased my questioning had it been offered to us, but I feel like nobody cared. They say the killer died, but they never explained how. They never explained why the RV... Okay, I found this on the web for Hey Siri, explain how. Check it out. Never explained why the RV was still around being sold to grandpas, and they never said who sold it to him. It was in police custody at some point. How did it get back into the public? Why is this killer able to possess this vehicle, as well as his victims? They were assholes too. It might have been one girl. I'm actually pretty unclear whether or not he killed multiple girls or not. Where the hell was this family going in the first place? They see caves, but that's all the information we got, and there's certainly no caves here. Where'd the dog go? Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Remember, I'm not trying to be an asshole to these filmmakers. I'm just offering some healthy snark and criticism from a horror fan. Don't take it personally if The Toy Box is your favorite movie. As always, if you have a movie to suggest, leave it in the comments. Email me. At me. I don't know. Tiny Frank, do you want to make some fan art up here? Thank you to Sarah Is Me for subscribing. Y'all thought I stopped doing that, didn't ya? Mmm. Please consider subscribing for more movie reviews, Hollywood horror, and creepypastas. And I'll see you next time when I get trapped inside my car because I forget how to unlock it. Bye.